The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, the new productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. Do, 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 do. Hey everybody, what's up, what's up, what's up? It is Talk Live Paranormal with Shannon and Mr. Bill. I am Mr. Bill. Shannon has been jumping in and out because she's been having lovely computer issues. Uh, she just sent me a message and said she's trying to get back in. Hopefully she'll jump back in here and we can uh, have her on with us. But we've got a good friend of the show with us. We got Jake from from Riverside, Iowa Paranormal and Ghost Hunts USA. What's happening, Mr. Jake? Not much. How are you? Good, good, good. How are things with you? Oh, you know, just getting over a weekend full of investigating. Yes, sir. We were together down in the Missouri State Pen. Before we get into that, though, real quick, I want to do a shout out to all the troops out there. To our men and women in uniform that are actively deployed or even on just on active duty here in the States or stationed overseas, I want to say a big, huge thank you for all things you do each and every day that keep us safe. And I also want to sh- throw a shout out to the men and women who have served this great country and gave their time, did their time, and are now out and enjoying what they've earned Thank you guys very much for everything you've done for the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, Coast Guards, everywhere. Thank you very much. Be safe. For the ones that are overseas and deployed right now, guys, keep your heads down. Be safe. Come home to your families. They're waiting for you back home here. All right. So let's see. While we're waiting for Shannon to jump back in, if she's going to be able to jump back in, let's let's jump right into the Missouri State Pen, Jake. Okay. How was how was your first run at the Missouri State Pen? Um, I there was nothing that could have prepared me for that. I got totally thrown off guard, not in a bad way, but there was just a lot of stuff I was not expecting. Were you expecting the amount of walking that was involved? <laughs> that that wasn't too much of a bother for me. Okay. So did you? So you? We started out in Building Four. Yep. Um, and then where were you at on Friday night down there? I was down in the dungeon. The dungeon. The lovely dungeon. What would you think of it? Um, it wasn't bad. There were a few people that uh, were there pretty strongly Friday night. Uh, now, are you talking people or are you talking entities? Well, a little bit of both. Uh, okay. We had one girl... It was our first group. She was down there for 30 seconds, and she was already crying. So um, I think she just had a lot of anxiety, and she was scared, and just, you know, it happens. Okay. And then, of course, I'm sitting there, and I watch this guy walk into into the cell she's standing in. And so I'm sitting there thinking to myself, how do I play this? <laughs> And then I found out she had her eyes closed, and I was like, well, good thing I didn't tell her he was standing right in front of her. Well, yeah, that probably would have been a good thing. Uh, Let's see. Did you go anywhere else? I did during free roam. What did you do on Friday night? What did you do on free roam? Uh, There were a few people that wanted to go to death row. Okay. And so I took them, and then... There was some sort of confusion or something like that as far as groups go. Because uh, Rob and I got back to command center and we were waiting for Tyler. And then Rob was like, well, let's just go down to 3D. Because I guess Andrew was like, well, Tyler's down at 3D. So we all just went there because it was a small enough group and just did a, a big group vigil down there for a little bit. And then we went to free room from there. Cool, cool, cool. That's awesome. So, during any of your time down there, was anything that got to you on, and we're just talking Friday night, 
Mm-hmm. It, was there anything that got to you or didn't really want to, uh, uh, it goes kind of messing with you at all? Yes. Is it something you want to talk about? Um, we can a little bit. It was down in the dungeon. And that was actually, so during free roam, Andrew, Regina, and I were down there with a bunch of guests. And I went to that back part where that cell is completely walled off, completely concreted. Yep. And I was looking at Andrew. I said, I'm going to go to that other side by myself. And he just looks at me and goes, are you going to be okay? And I looked at him. I said, I don't know. We'll find out. I said, I just feel like I got to go over there. And I looked at him and I said, I think you know why. And he goes, yeah, I kind of figured. And so then I walk over there. I get about halfway down the hall on that side. And then uh, I somebody was whispering something. And, really? And, yeah. And that was when I was like, nope, I'm done. <laughs> Because, uh, and I, this part I, I'm not going to repeat, but what was whispered to me was not uh, not pleasant. Really? So, yeah. And I was not, I was not about to, to push that situation any further. So I know for our listeners that are able to listen out there, we're, we've been talking about how we were down there on Friday and Saturday and we were at Missouri State Penn, but it sounds like only Jake was there. Jake was there with Andrew, Tyler, and, and Rob. Rob. So the rest of us, there wasn't enough uh, guests to justify all of us being there. So we went back to a, pl- a house that we that uh, were rent- we were rented and stayed in. It's called the Hobo Hill House in down there in uh, St. St. Joe, Missouri. Well, no, 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 Jefferson. Jefferson. There you go. Sorry, but I'm my brain's all conglomerated. So we had a blast there. Um, it is supposed. It is a paranormal home. There's some issues there. It was a slave owner's home back in the day, and they used to have slaves chained up in the basement, from what I understand. So we're still learning about that house. We're going to go back and do some more there. Hopefully, we have some more information from the next time we're going to be there. But then Saturday came, and yep. all then we all we were all there. You, Tyler, Rob, Andrew, myself, Michelle, Michelle and Kelly. Kelly. Regina was there too. Don't forget yep. about Regina. Reg- Regina was there. Um, Regina is one of the newest members of Ghost Hunt. She's in her training phase, which is awesome. So it was it was a little weird down there. Mm-hmm. I, I ended up with all my groups. I was down in 3D the whole time. Now, some people don't like 3D. Some people think it's a little unnerving. They talk about different things that are going on down there. And even the guy, even the people that work there at Missouri State Penn have talked about how it's changed over the last year or even the last six months. Now, you got to realize this building has been closed up from the end of November to last, pretty much last weekend. Yep. So it's not only is it cold, it was cold and it was, well, it was cold in there. And after we got in there, some of the people that work at Missouri now say they won't go down to 3D. The freakiest part is, is while my very first group was going through down through there on 3D, one of the bells kept ringing. That happened Friday night. Well, they said there's no electricity to the bell. Yep. So I so I yanked the wires out of it. I was down there. They told me I could yank on them. I pulled the wires out. Okay, it seemed to stop. And then it rang again with no wires hooked up to it. So I don't know if it was a discharge of, elect- of some sort of electricity. It was still in the magnet. Or, it could have been. Or, or it just decided, guess what? I'm going to mess with you. It did so, on Friday night, too. Oh, did it? Yeah. So I have one guy standing. I, I, I put I put at least two people in every cell on 3D on the backside, um, and we I blindfolded everyone. Or I blind. Sorry, let me rephrase, rephrase that. I put at least two people in every cell. Then I went by each cell and asked anybody who was brave enough to step forward, stand in the doorway of the cell, facing out with their back to the cell, and put a blindfold on. So I had one person in each doorway. 
And as they were standing there, I kind of like, you know, tried to talk to people talk and tell them you know these guys can't see you if you want to touch them push them hug them kiss them whatever you want to do you just can't hurt them and one lady goes i think i'm done i go what's wrong she goes you said you could do anything but not hurt them she said i felt my butt getting rubbed i said now is anybody in there with you and when i went down to her cell she was alone none of her friends were in the cell with her there was four other people in the cell next to her I didn't huh. know she was alone. So she, she, she I, I talked her into staying there. She stayed right there. She didn't, didn't jump, you know, didn't leave. She stayed blindfolded. And she kind of goes, Hey, if you're going to grab my butt, you need to prove that you're here and grab the guy's butt next in the cell next to us or grab the person's butt in the cell next to us. I'll be damned if not like two minutes later, the guy who was, a, who was a really tall guy, had dark hair. He had a really, uh, really petite little young lady, well, his wife with him. And she was in the cell and he jumped out through the doorway, threw his mask off and turned around and goes, did you touch me? She was clear in the back sitting on the floor. There was no way she could have moved without any of us hearing her. <laughs> like why? Wow. He, he looked at the lady in the cell next to him. He goes, "Did you just tell him that whatever to come over and grab my butt?" She goes, "Yeah, it did. It grabbed his butt." Mm. So we had some touchy feely going on down there. We had a couple people that got a little unnerved. We did fi- have a crawler that was going around down there, which oh, was yeah. amazing. Um, and everybody saw it. They were just oh wow, just in awe of kind of looking at it, going, "That's a crawler, y'all." Oh, they 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 started describing something, and I couldn't see through the group at first because they were all staring. Um, you know, at the halfway point on the backside, there's that middle cage that you can shut. Yeah. Um, they were all standing around that cage, looking back towards that back wall and that shower, and they're like, "Something's moving down there," and they started watching, and then people started backing up, and I'm going, "Okay, stop. Describe to me what you're seeing." They're like, well, it looks like we're waiting for legs to come out from behind that wall, but it never does. And it just looks like something with its head way down and arms sticking out. I said, are you sure there's a head? And everybody got real quiet. And all of a sudden they all went, I don't think there's a damn head. There's no head. It's just arms and a body. I said, well, our crawler has come back over to us. What was weird is Michelle was over in the dungeon yeah. And, and was talking about how there were issues going on over there that are the – or not issues. There was things happening over there that are normally the same things that happen in 3D. They did, It was really weird. I don't understand it at all. Yeah, she said it was almost like they switched. Yeah, so the crawlers we were getting seemed to be like the one – or the the, the – activity that we were getting seemed to be more or less like the activity that was going on over in the dungeon normally and or over in building four but then it was in 3d but then michelle said the ones that were the one that was in 3d wasn't some i mean in the dungeon wasn't what what she's ever seen down there it was like something new almost mm-hmm. like whatever is normally there got pushed out and something new took its place so I'm real curious to see how next month goes just because of the, you know, the, everything that's happened, see if it's calmed down or if it's getting worse or what happens. Yeah, for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about it, Jake. Um, I know Tyler was not happy with me, what I did. As you Wait, know, why? What did you, what? Do you know, you know what I did in 3D on free time, right? Yeah, I popped down there for a little bit. Well, Tyler was not happy with me doing it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yep. So for our listeners out there, I'll let you know what I did. There's there's these boxes that you can buy or you can make, and I made my own. They're called EM pumps, electromagnetic pumps. All it is is a little motor with a magnet on the end of it with a battery and a switch in a box. <laughs> and the magnet spins at high speeds and puts off electromagnetic field. I built four of them, and I put them in a row, and I created a box that I like to call, I want to call a spirit light. It uses um, UV light and IR light, but it also has a speaker built into it that I hooked my phone up to with a sound generator and took it anywhere from 8,000 kilohertz to 20,000 kilohertz. Just wave it just up and down, up and down, until we found a spot that seemed like where 
people were actually seeing stuff, which turned out to be about 9,800. Now, it was loud and it was annoying, but if you can get through that, you can get through anything. So we watched it for a little while and nothing seemed to be happening. Um, you could see some stuff moving around on the back wall. And nothing kind of jumped out at us. And then I pulled a stupid. Yeah, I know for anybody listening, uh, JP, I know if you're listening, yeah, Bill pulled a stupid. <coughs> See, even the dogs thought it was stupid. Yeah, uh, stop. So, I pulled a big stupid, and I decided I was going to push the envelope just a little bit. And I took and I made a. I took the four boxes and I put them about three feet apart and made a square out of them. And I put a chair in the middle of them. And I sat in front of the light in the sound box in the middle of the chair, in the middle of the EM pumps, and just started trying to meditate a little bit. Now, to me, it felt like I was there about maybe five minutes at the most. And when I, when I opened my eyes, everybody that was down there with me was gone. So I started gathering up stuff and boxed it up, turned everything off and thought, okay, nobody wanted to see me sit here in the dark by myself. I guess it could have been, well, I guess it was a little boring. And I started heading out, walked around the other side and started heading up the steps. And about that time, something punched me in the arm. And that was the point when I actually woke up and it had been, huh. almost, and it had been almost 20 minutes that I had been sitting in that chair and there was at least 25 people down there. And they never left me. But I swore to God they all left me. And I was alone. And a guy tapped my arm or hit my arm and kind of brought me out of it. And I, I remember looking around and I was in a complete daze. It was the weirdest thing in the world. I don't recommend trying that if you haven't worked on some of your, how do I want to say it, your meditation and being able to ground yourself. Um, but I, I do know that when I told Tyler what I did, he told me, why don't you just let, put a pentagram shape on the floor and go ahead and light it on fire and stand in the middle of it? Because it's exactly what you were doing. So, well, it wasn't a pentagram. There was only five, you know, four points. So it can't, couldn't have been a pentagram. It was just a square. He, and he kind of called me an idiot and a few other choice British words. You know, that he likes to use. Mm -hmm. And and I can't wait to review the footage, but I left the camera down at Michelle's. So I, when, on Saturday when I go down there, I'll probably watch the footage and see what it looks like. But I plan on trying it again next month. But I am going to create a few more EM pumps and try to boost the power a little bit. So we'll see how that goes. And see if I can get Tyler to call me a few more names. If I, if I had a dollar for all the times Tyler called me an idiot on Saturday night because I scared him. So for everybody that's out there, if you get a chance to go and go on a ghost, uh, a, a paranormal investigation with Ghost Hunts USA, if you can go with Tyler and you can scare him, it's the funniest damn thing in the world, to tell you the honest truth. It is. It's, it's funnier than funny. Um. I don't know why it's so funny. It just seems to be that funny. Um, it, it's just really wild to see him jump like that. So it, it was totally unintentional. I was just standing there, and he didn't know I was, I don't know, what, three, four feet behind him, however far I was. He turned around, and there I was, and he didn't know I'd been standing there. Well, then why'd you scare him like that? I didn't. I'd been standing there for the last three or four minutes. <laughs> Not my fault he never turns around. So, so my question is, did you get any sleep at all? When we got back? Yeah. When we got back to Hill House or, like, back to Iowa? Yes. I got... I don't know, probably two, two and a half hours at uh, Hill House, and then we got up earlier than everybody else, and we left kind of early, and then didn't sleep at all in the car on the way back, 
and then had, I don't know, a couple hour nap once I got home. And that was about it. So other than that, you were pretty good, though? Yeah. Well, I mean, you saw me. I woke up after a couple hours on Saturday morning, and then, you know, we all went to breakfast and did some of our own stuff. Yeah. And then got back, I went and took a nap up in yours, Kelly's, Michelle's room, and woke up to Tyler screaming at me that it was time to get up, calling me Geico. Uh, <laughs> and then, well, that was, like, I, I must have, like, ran down the stairs, because I came down the stairs and everyone goes, what's wrong, is everything okay? And I'm like, yeah, everything's fine. <laughs> but I felt wired. Well, you were I, wired. After I woke up from that nap, I was ready to go. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. Number one, you had a you 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 had the chance to go there and see things, mm-hmm. and I'm glad you're getting accustomed to them now. Um, I'm glad that you're able to do what you could do down there and have a good time with it. I just I can't wait until you go again. Because that'll you'll you'll start to those the entities that are there will actually try to you know they'll get to know you a little bit more right and and when they do then it it seems like it's a whole lot better so yeah I'm excited there were some stuff that happened to me Saturday that I've never really experienced before so that was kind of cool. Good, good deal. Good deal. So, let's see. Now that I've talked about the stupid stuff that I've done, I'm going to jump into the topics that Shannon was going to try to do. She is still having some major issues um, trying to get get her computer up. Shannon, we miss you. Hopefully you can jump in here in a little bit. Um... Let's see. I got to pull it up here. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so what Shannon was going to talk about is how to conduct a paranormal investigation for beginners. If you've never done this before, now you're going to hear some things that we've talked about a lot, but we found the, these sites and <laughs> some of it is pretty much um, information that you've probably already guessed that we're going to talk about, like step number one, find a potentially haunted location. And there was one on here that I never even thought about looking for, looking at, and that was hiking trails. But again, you know, it's the earth. What's there? So uh, there are thousands of potential locations you can investigate. Um, you really don't want to do anything close to your home if you can do it. You don't want to do like your own yard because you don't. If you do find something, you probably don't want to bring up something into your home. Uh, you may want to look at. You can look online. There's a lot of different articles that talk about. You know, look in your own state. Look around where you live as far as your own state and see what what people come up with and what what people have got written down as possible paranormal locations. You want to do as much research on those locations as you possibly can. You know, like like if you use a place like a private residence or someone else's, if, if you're going to go to this, do somebody's, you know, do your buddies if you don't go over there a whole lot because then you can stir stuff up and go home. If you can get into these locations, you might want to look at, I've always wanted to do a museum with some old stuff in it. Mm, that would be interesting. I, I mean, and I'm not talking like the Glore Psychiatric Museum. I'm talking about a full-blown history museum where one area's got dinosaurs and the other one's got, you know, stuff from medieval torture to whatever, especially a medieval torture area because that's got to have something associated with it. Yeah. I wonder if there's anything around here like that. Do you know of what if the Does the university have anything up in Iowa City like that? If they... Well, I mean, they've got the Natural History Museum at McBride, but that's more of just, like, history of the Earth and the animals and plants that have lived on Earth. 
Yeah. Otherwise, I know sometimes the libraries got little exhibits, but those are short term. So I don't okay. know of anything. I don't know of anything that's long term. We might have to look into that. That might be kind of fun to do an investigation and find an old, or well, find a museum. That'd be fun. You know, you can also look at old or abandoned buildings that may be closed to the public. And I, I don't know how many times I got to say this. We do, we talk about cemeteries too, but make sure you get permission. Don't mm -hmm. trespass. Um, be, because of the fact that if you trespass, now you're breaking the law, and we don't want to do that. And then they, that gives you not if you, if you get permission from say you're going to do, excuse me, an old crematorium that's in in somewhere. And you get permission to do it, and then people find out, you know, hey, they went through the rules, they did what they had to do. We followed, you, know, you followed the, the penal. You know, they may say you can go into this room, this room, and this room, but we want you to stay out of that room. And you do that, and you be considerate about the the location and the rules. You your name's going to get out there, and people are going to find out that you're okay. They, they're doing this the right way. But yeah, don't trespass. I don't know how many times we say that over and 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 over again. Please don't trespass because you're just going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. And then you want to schedule a time to go in and do your pre walkthrough. And yeah, I like to do a pre, you know, we, we, we like to do, we do all these investigations, it seems like at night. But why can't you do an investigation during the day? There's nothing saying that the, you know, maybe the spirits are sleeping at night. I don't know. But you don't want to try to do, a lot of times you can do a pre-walkthrough. Like if you're going to do a, a, a building that's a public building that's open during the day, that's kind of the prime time to do it because you may get some of the people that work in that building going, we have had experiences in this area, this area, and this area. So it's kind of nice to be able to, you know, get their input on stuff. Let's see. Yeah. I love this step number two. Phone or text a friend. You never want to do this alone. And I know. Here it comes, Jake. Go ahead and say it. No, I just, nope. <laughs> you want to take, oh, you know, if nothing but for safety. If you get hurt and you're alone, then you're alone and you're hurt. So, you really want to do as much as you can to take somebody with you on an investigation. So let's, you know, get a hold of somebody. Get a hold of your crazy Uncle Tommy or somebody that's that's got the, go, the cojones to go with you because you never know what's going to happen. Step number three on this list is gather what you need. And I really didn't understand that at first because I always we, we always go and we already have what we need. We have a right. bag. We have our bag that's packed all the time. We can do a investigation out of our backpacks real easy. But this does make a lot of sense. For, first of all, and I'm I'm talking to the people that are going to be doing the Missouri State Pen or any place that might be cold. Consider the climate and dress appropriately. How many people do we have in Missouri, Jake? That just <laughs> weren't dressed warm enough. Oh my gosh. And then they sit there and they complain about how it's cold and then they're having a miserable time. Other people get annoyed and Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. And then it says dress in light layers. So you can remove and add as many layers as you need to when the temperature changes. That makes sense. If you're running around and you're doing a lot of stuff, you're gonna start sweating. You need to take off a couple layers. Here comes your the one you laughed at, Jake. Don't wear jiggly, jiggly jewelry, squeaky shoes, or clothing that makes noises from rubbing, such as corduroy pants or a nylon jacket. I mean, yeah, I laughed at it just because of the way that it was worded, but it does make sense. Because if you're trying to do an honest investigation, like me, I shift my weight a lot because I have a, uh, my back and my hips don't yep. do so well if I stand a certain way for too long. So I shift my weight a lot. And if you wear clothes that are going to make a lot of noise or shoes that will squeak when you do that, something like that, then it's going to contaminate what you have and what you get. And how many people wore them nylon jackets or them coated jackets that you hear that swish, 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 yeah. swish? 
Oh, stop moving. Stop moving. Please be quiet. Stop moving. It says wear comfortable, supportive, closed toed, soft soled shoes that tread quietly, such as sneakers or hiking boots. Skip the high heels, flip flops, sandals, or platforms. Now, I laughed at that thing when it says skip the high heels, but I actually remember last year down in Missouri, about four ladies were together and they were all wearing high heels. Oh. I've seen a lot of scary movies. Women can't run in high heels very well. And why would you want to wear high heels? Right. So it says wear a watch or bring some some sort of kind of time device that re- so you can record the times to the minutes. Um, it says do not use your cell phone for this purpose because you will more than likely be using your cell phone as a video camera or just taking pictures. Now, that doesn't make sense to me because when I'm taking pictures or I'm using it as a video camera, mine still shows the time on it. Right. So that one, maybe maybe this is old. I don't know when this article was written. I didn't look at that. Wear something with lots of pockets. So if you do take equipment, you have places to store them so your hands are free. Y'all get a backpack. Yeah. Get a backpack. Because most of the time, you don't want to be looking at stuff or doing stuff where it all of a sudden... You're ripping open a, a Velcroed pocket, and boom, you're making noises. And now somebody else is recording, and something else isn't working right. So, or you're getting sounds you didn't know you were gonna get. So, yeah, just wear some, don't wear wear things with lots of pockets, but make sure they don't have Velcro on them. Or if they have buttons, unbutton them before you start. Right, Shannon. What did I just come into? <laughs> we're, we're talking about you know dressing appropriately for an investigation. Oh, okay. If you wear corrective lenses, be sure to take them with you. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. So if you're blind, without glasses, it's probably not a good thing to not take your glasses on a ghost hunt. <laughs> <laughs> you might be even blinded or... or, or. Or, oh lord don't wear scented perfumes lotions scented hair products clothes that have been washed with scented pellets or essential oils all these scents, all these smells can interfere with your sense of smell how many times Shannon have you done something where you're smelling something because somebody decided to wear a ton of cologne uh, a lot Yeah, I don't understand that I just don't is, understand. What is that noise? Are you guys hearing that too? That every now and then that TV? Yeah. I think that's at Jake's place. Oh, okay. If you're going to be in a building or crawling around in attics, basements, take a filtration mask and gloves to protect you from airborne pathogens from <sighs> rodent droppings, dust, mold, and other particles. You know... If there's going to be droppings, I'm probably not going in there. <laughs> well, yeah. Bring snacks and hydration. I'm but don't that... eat it or drink it while you're investigating. No kidding. Always wash your hands before eating, particularly in old buildings, and use sanitizers so you don't accidentally ingest dangerous anything dangerous you may have touched during your investigation. Can you ingest a spirit? If I, if I go to take a bite of my sandwich or my cookie, and the, a, a spirit's trying to take it from me, if I bite down, will I swallow part of their finger? Is that possible? Am I alone? I'm trying to con- I'm trying to conceptualize <laughs> why you would think that. I mean, that's a legitimate question, I suppose, but I and just you, never would have thought of that. And you think they yell "ouch" when you bite them? <laughs> oh, Shannon's computer just crashed again. All right, here's the funniest one out of the whole thing, but it is the, it it is the honest to god truth. Truth? How about truth? Don't mix. Spirits with your spirits. Don't drink. Mm-hmm. Don't drink alcohol 
or don't get drunk before you go out and do an investigation. Holy shnikes. And don't get stoned. Well, maybe not at the investigation. We have had some people that have saw, seen some wild things while on some medication, we'll call it that. But you really want to, I, th I think, Jake, you really want to approach it with a clear mind. You don't want to do a whole lot before, you know, almost anything before. You want to be as clear as possible. I think? agree. Okay. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree. Just because when you go into some of these places in the dark, that's going to mess with you enough as it is. And then when you put something else on top of it, one, that could just be unsafe. Uh, you know, like falling downstairs or, yep. or something like that. That could just plain be unsafe. And two, like I said before, your eyes are already going to be playing tricks on you. Why give your body something else to battle? True. Very true. Very, very true. And if you're going to smoke or vape, or even use chewing tobacco because some of the guys that use chewing tobacco don't realize how much that messes with your sense of smell. Mm -hmm. um, so don't do it. Do it outside. Go outside on a break or, you know, do something. Shannon says, I sound like a robot. Huh. So let's see where are we at. <coughs> now we're going to a little bit of equipment. You know, I think some of the best equipment that we have, and I've said this over and over and over again, is you yourself, yep. your 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 senses, your five senses you have, and you know every now and then take some of those senses away from you. Plug, put earplugs in, and cover your eyes. And just let your sense of feel, taste, and smell kind of mess with you a little bit. See what you get. But you should, you know, test your equipment out at home before you take it in there. Check your EVPs. Check your recorders. Check your video cameras. Know how to use them before you get there. Now, the one piece of equipment I found out that I, I didn't even realize could be used was an old-fashioned compass. If you can sit a compass down on something, it, it, it acts just like an EMF detector. So if you put it down and it starts, you know, it's going to spin until it finds north. And if it stays there and you're watching it, especially if you get one that glows in the dark, it, if it starts to move, something may be near that. Note that down on a piece of paper or talk into your, your, your EVP recorder and note the time when it happens. But if you can videotape it, that's even cooler. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. Um, let's see. If you're going to be in the woods or on a hiking trail, know the map of the trail. Bring a compass. Bring a GPS device. But remember... If you're using a GPS device, it'll mess with an EMF detector. So you never know. Just be careful with it. Do a wa initial walkthrough. That's step four. We're really on step four. We're out of time here. Step four. Do an initial walkthrough when you can see everything. But do it. At a pre-established time, meet with the people that own the place or whatever and let them know that you're going to be there or let them know you're going to be there. Walk through. Don't do it with any equipment. Write things down. Um, write write everything down. You know, I'm sorry. Don't write everything down while you're doing that walkthrough. But when you're done with the walkthrough, write down your impressions of how you felt when you were in an area. I think we do a walkthrough when we do a, like Jake, when we do a private home investigation, that's one of our biggest things is do that walkthrough and get that baseline feeling. Yes. And see, and see what, see what you're going to feel later. Um, 
if you worry, if you're worried that you won't remember how you felt in a certain room, it is okay every now, you know, so stop several times during your walkthrough and write it down in your notebook. Like me, I'm absent minded as hell. And I'm not going to remember what happened in that other room or what I felt like when I walk into another room and start feeling something completely different. But yeah, you can stop every now and then and write things down. But after your initial walkthrough, think about the equipment you want to use in there. Take your time. Think about it. You know, whether you want to leave Shannon in there blindfolded, tied up in the dark, and see if she she must not be able to talk because she would have laughed or, or yelled at me on that one. Um, or if you want to leave Jake sitting in a chair blindfolded. Oh, we've <laughs> done that before. <laughs> Know how to use your camera. Wow. I don't know how many times to say that. Know how to use your camera, whether it's a GoPro, whether it's a night vision camera, whether it's just a regular good old-fashioned camera. Know how to use it. Know how to take multiple pictures at one time. Know how to take multiple... Some of the cameras now can take multiple pictures with flash, which I think are kind of cool. But know what you're doing. Step five is pick a spot and observe. This is one of the biggest ones that we have the most trouble with people when we take them on an investigation is, is when you see, when you get into an area, you may have to sit there for 30 minutes to an hour, not doing a thing. Lights on or lights off. Don't, but you don't want to chat, you smoke, vape, eat anything I've noticed people will play on their phone. Well, if you're playing on your phone, you're missing what's going on around you. Yeah. Sit as quietly as you can and notice what's happening around you. Write stuff down if something happens. And it not just what you see or hear, but think about what you're smelling. Did the, did the scent change in the room? What Did it get cold for a little while and then get warm again? Did it get, did it get warm and then get cold again? Oh, just back and forth. And this sounds really weird, but I always tell everybody to taste the air. You know, take it, in, inhale and feel that air go across your tongue and then taste it. Did it change? Did something, did some? so use those five senses that you were born with. <laughs> Shannon says, I'm not putting her anywhere alone. Uh, she could hear me, but she couldn't respond. <laughs> If you have an audio recorder or a video recorder when you're do when you're doing this, turn it on, but set it down and don't be anywhere near it. But here's the thing: make sure when you first turn it on, you vocally identify the date, the time, the place, and the specific location within the place. That time stamps it for you. So when you get, if you don't listen to it for a couple of days because you want to let your mind clear, then when you go back and listen, you'll be like, "Oh yeah, this okay." And then you'll, you, at least you got a timestamp for it. We have so many people we work with that just even forget to turn a recorder on. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to mention any names on the air. And it's not Jake. And it's not Bill. And it's not Shannon. So we'll let it go with that. If you're doing an audio or video recording, oh, I don't know how many times we've said this. Don't whisper or shuffle around. But yes, if, you, oh but if you do have to make a noise, such as a sniff, a cough, a whisper, if you have to move your feet around, after you do it, say, that was me. I just I moved my foot. So that way you're not hearing it and then wondering, what the hell was that? I don't remember hearing that. That's one of the hardest things to get through people is to understand that you know you can't you don't want to move around. And that goes back to the whole wearing of the right clothes. While you're doing this, um, if you do notice some sort of anomaly, see if you can identify its natural cause for it. In other words, debunk it. Try to debunk it. If a door opens, go up to that door, push it shut again, and try you know, just try to open it without moving the handle. If it won't open by itself, or have somebody go on the other side, shut the door, and push on it. See if it, see if Open another door and see if there's an air pressure change. It, little tiny things to think about. 
debunk, 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 debunk. I don't know how many times I can say that. No, it's it's true though, and so many people, especially when they don't have as much experience in the field and they're just starting out, it's really easy to think that everything is paranormal. Agreed. And, and when we go on these these events with ghost hunts, we see the same thing with uh, with our guests, and they get very excited, and, and I'm glad that they get excited. And it's okay to let them be excited, but at the same time, it becomes a little bit of, of, of a detriment as well if you start to think that everything is paranormal and there's no point where anyone tries to rationalize anything then it and, starts to come across as uh, kind of hokey, for lack of a better term. Yeah. I mean, I know that this last weekend we were down, we were in build, in the general population building. With, so I was with some people on free time, and we kept hearing a noise. And I said, well, let's go towards it. And half the people looked at me like I was freaking crazy. And I said, let's go. we got to go make sure it's not something that we can't figure out what it is. And we we went all the way up in the middle. You know, how there's that big cat wall, that uh, stairs, and that uh, big square walk around. Yeah. We st- we started listening and started watching. The light banging we were hearing, or the light noise we were hearing, wasn't happening all the time. But when we hear it, we started noticing one of the window, the panes of glass was loose, and the wind was letting it through. It was oh. tapping back and forth. So, which was great because there were some people who were petrified. They, they, I said, I'm going to leave you guys here alone. I'm going to go down this way. And they were like, hell no, you're not. Um, do, you know, try that. Debunk the stuff because if you can look and go, okay, I see what's causing this. I know it's not that. That's great. But it's what's even better is when you can go, I know something's making noise and I can't find it. Right. Because now you may be looking at something messing with you. Take your time. Go through it slowly. Don't rush. And that kind of brings it to the next portion of EVPs. Don't rush your EVPs. Don't go, uh, who's here? What's your name? What year is it? Do you live here? And then wait. Because you just asked four questions and not given them any time to answer. Or even try to answer. And you may get a shut the hell up on the backside. You know, ask a question and try to leave at least 30 seconds in between each one. Give that chance, that time for that sound to come through. Or that entity or that spirit to answer you if you think you've actually got one there. And I always... One of the biggest ones that I do... Before I start an EVP session, I'll, once I turn the recorder on and identify where I, who, who I am and what I'm doing, I invite whatever I think might be there to come join us and talk to us. Because you get a lot of people just turn it on. And, Jake, I know you've seen this, especially up at Edinburgh with some people. They turn it on and start asking questions right away. Well, do the entities know what we're, what, who you're talking to? Are you talking right. to me? Or are you talking to the, the 20 other people that are sitting there with you? You know? Invite them to come talk to you, sit next to you, and be polite about it. And then also at the close of your sessions, thank them. Thank your thank your spirits. And I know that sounds really crazy, but thank them for coming up and talking to you or trying to interact with you. Because next time, it may be even stronger. Because once they know you're not there to harm them or disrespect them, they may you may get more activity than what you're you're anticipating on the next time you go. And I don't know about you, Jake, but I really honestly feel you can't do an investigation once and know what is exactly there. Uh, I would agree. I think you can get a general sense. I mean, I mean, look at Michelle, right? For example, she can go there and get a general idea, but beyond that, the specifics and the details, you're right. That's going to come with uh, more opportunities to investigate the same place. And each time you go, you'll get a little piece of the puzzle. And then you can start constructing a story from all of those different pieces. 
And if you just go there one time and call it good, you're never going to get the whole story. True. So I've seen some investigations and paranormal groups out there that like to just say, all right, we're going to go do this building. Uh, we've been in here for five minutes, and this it's demonic. It's 100% demonic in here. It's evil. It's nasty. Uh, we shouldn't be in here. And then they're in there for an hour, hour and a half, and then they leave. I don't know how you can do anything in a, of an investigation in an hour and a half. You, right. need, you need to go in and spend some time there. Now, if you've been there four or five times, and each time you're getting something, and each time it's messing with you just a little bit more and a little bit more, you may only want to spend an hour and a half to two hours in there before you need to leave. But take your time, especially in the very beginning, and leave all your expectations at the door. Yes. Don't expect, okay, we're going to this building. Um, we've heard that this and this and this and this and this happened there, and that's what we're going to get. We're not leaving until we get that. Well, if you're not leaving until you get X, Y, and Z, you might as well start counting A, B, Cs, and one, two, threes because you're going to be there for a long time. And then your mind can play tricks on you and make you think you're getting X, Y, and Z. And when you go back and you start looking at all your 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 videos and your pictures and your your everything you've done your EVPs there's nothing there there's nothing there so take your time take care of things go multiple times and 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 just be cautious and be safe but also go with an open mind now there's one part that we never seem to talk about and that's after your investigation. After you're done. What do you do when you first get home? Well, I know the first thing I want to do is usually take a shower. Because a lot of times we're dirty, we're nasty. Um, but you also want to remember to clean your clothes because of the same purpose. If you're walking around any any you know dust and dirt and mold, in older buildings, you want to get that stuff off your clothes. It's not good for the nice clothes. But how many people sit down and clean things like uh, your cell phone, your ink pen, wipe off your notebook, disinfect your flashlight, your EVP recorder, wipe down your EMF detector? It's not something most people do, but it's something you really need to look at doing. Because, because you never know what you're going to be bringing home with you. Have you ever done that? Um, I haven't. I've never really thought about it. I usually forget I have my equipment to begin with anyway. But no, that's 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 a good point because you never, you know, there could be, um, like if you if you have a recorder in your hand. There could be mold spores or something floating out in the air that you may, might not ever see, but then if you don't ever clean off that equipment, now you're allowing those things to, to grow, and uh, a lot of them can be hazardous to your health and, and make you sick. So even though you may not be able to see it, or you might say, oh, well, you know, the recorder was in my hand the whole time, that doesn't mean there's still not something airborne. And that on could top, be an issue. On top of that, where do most people keep their equipment? In their own home. Right. So if you're not cleaning your equipment... You're bringing of all stuff, of that stuff into your house. Yeah. So take your time to clean your equipment. Wipe it down. You know, dump out that bag. Wash off the outside of that bag. Do, you know, do something to protect yourself. It's all about safety. It's the biggest number one thing. I know I talked about safety, and when I'm saying safety, and I was the idiot that sat in the middle of the, the EVP, e, the EM pumps. That's a different type of safety um, that I should have been taking into consideration, and I didn't. And that's why I'm going to do it again. Um, when you sit down to review your data, how long do you like to wait before you start listening to things? Um couple days at least usually right now with work it ends up being anywhere couple weeks to 
a month or so. So sit down and relax. Find a place where you can relax. You're comfortable. Not so comfortable you're going to be listening and fall asleep. But get comfortable and watch your videos. And do it where you're not going to get disturbed. Or sit down with several people. That if they don't mind what you know, if they don't want to go with you on an investigation, maybe you can sit down and watch that video and or listen to that raw data for you and see if they hear something. It always helps to have an extra set of eyes and ears on that, and which is you know, you don't want to tell them what they're listening for. You want to just tell them to listen for like sounds that don't sound right or something that doesn't look right on a picture or in a video. Just you know. Have them have the people that didn't go with you listen to it. We do that all the time. We have, you know, on our team, we have multiple people that may not be able to go to investigation, and that's perfect. Here's the people that are, are here, and they're, you know, here's what we went to, and here, now you guys listen to it, and I want you to see if you catch something because I don't know what I heard. And it works. It really does. Yep. So I think we got about a, probably about a minute and a half left. Um, if you do capture something on there, write it down, review it two or three times, make sure that it wasn't your eyes playing tricks on you, and then let some other people watch it, and then share it. If as long as you can, as long as you can share it without getting in trouble, you don't want to share something where you were in a private home doing an investigation um, because there's certain things. The certain things you don't want to, you know, put out. There, Advertise, so. yeah. Yeah. So we got less than a minute left. I want to say thank you to Jake. Thanks for being here. Yeah, my uh, pleasure. Thanks. To, I know I kind of filibustered the whole thing here for a little while. But uh, uh, thanks to Shannon for jumping in and out. I know she could hear us. She just was having trouble bouncing in. I so, can talk now. Oh, sure. The last minute she can talk. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really pissed off. <laughs> So I want to thank everybody for listening in. Sorry, but we didn't have the Facebook Live going. We've had some issues with Facebook right now. I know they've had issues all day on Facebook, it sounds like. Thank you guys very much for being here. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next week. We'll we'll, we'll be here next week, and hopefully we'll have Facebook up. And, um, guys, play safe. If it's flooding in your area, don't go through the water. Go around. Don't drown. Be safe. Guys, thank you very much for being here. And uh, last thing we got to say is we'll see you in the dark. Bye.